I'm here to actually show you how to create the future. And I'm going to talk about the art and science of 3D printing. But I'm not going to go into a, a lot on technology because I believe technology need to, be, need to transcend humanity and I want to make technology accessible. So I'm going to tell you the story and journey of how I got into this field and how I traversed the entrepreneurial journey. So to, to do that, let me bring you back to my childhood where the seed was first planted. When I was a little girl, my uncle, who I thought was my father, told me, bamboo is flexible, bend with wing, but not breaking. As if though he knew challenges was awaited me. I was born in China. My life turned upside down in 1966 when I was eight years old. My Shanghai parents had five, sibling, uh, five children, and I was the youngest when I was a six uh, little girl, and totally beloved. My mom told me food has five essential elements, color, texture, taste, and, and not to forget, put a, always put a little bit of love in there. And one day, my father was arrested, and I heard noise in the backyard. The red guards coming to my family. I saw they came for my parents, but they came for me. And I was taken away from the family that I knew and learned that day they were not my biological parents. And I was put on a very crowded train to send to Nanjing, which is a city 300 miles south of Shanghai, and over there, I was supposed to find my biological parents, and I arrived a little bit too late. They already been sent to hard labor. And I was put into a single room in the dormitory. There, I found my little sister. She was four years old, and I lived there with her for the next 10 years. And I was abused. I was put on the stage to scream out of my lung that I was nobody. And that atrocity called Cultural Revolution lasted 10 years, which started, I was supposed to be in first grade, and ended when I was supposed to graduate from high school. So instead of studying normal academics, I spent most of the years in the faculty learning how to build radios and speedometers, and that's where I learned how to be a maker. But today is not a day to relive those years um, I just want to mention that because that has a lot to do with my journey and, and the journey of resilience. Fast forward 10 years, Cultural Revolution ended. I went to college. I really wanted to be an astronaut. That was my dream. My dad was an aerospace aeronautic professor before he was sent to Russian border cutting trees. I ended up studying Chinese literature got in trouble right before graduation because I covered the infanticide due to um, one-child policy in China. Many baby girls was killed during that time. And I left China to come to the United States because I was asked to leave. So I landed in the United States in 1984 in January with very few words of English, $80 uh, cashier's check in my pocket. I was short of $5 to arrive in Albuquerque, which is where I registered to study English as a second language. A man in the line gave me $5 so I could buy my ticket. From that, I learned, when in doubt, always err on the side of generosity. So I landed in Albuquerque and studied English. I thought I was going to continue uh, comparative literature, and I discovered I didn't have enough English to do that. And also, if you study English literature, you can't really find a job in America. I need to find a marketable skill. Fortunately, 
um, there was this new field called computer science. I asked, what is that? And a student told me that you write with man-made language to make stuff. I thought, great. I'm good with language, and I know how to make stuff. So instead of writing essays on montage, I was writing code for the future not yet imagined. And from there, I landed in National Center for Supercomputing Applications uh, as one of the places I worked. And I hired a student, his name is Mark Andreessen. And Mark and my team started writing NCSA Mosaic, which was the first multimedia internet browser, later become Internet Explorer um, and um, Netscape. So university said, Ping, everything you touch turned into gold. And I said, gold, where? Um, I was educated by the communist system. I was told money was evil. I saw being an entrepreneur means um, you hate your job and you love money. And I saw that I hate money and love my job. I was never going to start a business. Um, I even wrote it in my first book. But shortly, two years later, I actually started a business called Geomagic. The reason is I met this man. His name is Chuck Hall. He is the inventor of 3D printing. He printed the very first 3D parts 30 years ago in 1983. Now, put in perspective, at that time, Macintosh did not exist. Computer added design software and printer, 3D printer doesn't even go together. But I was instantly hooked because my background in manufacturing when I grew up. And my mind worked like a butterfly. I see up endless opportunities of being able to capture things in real world and turn them into digital models and then print it on a printer. Now, at that time, we were already using 2, 2D printer. You write a document, you push a button, and the printer lays down the ink on a paper, and you get your document. And 3D printer works the same way. It, instead of lay down inks, it lay down material, such as a metal, ceramic, or plastic. And it lays them down layer by layers, and you end up with a product. I thought, wow, um, by being able to do that, we could make things individualized, and, and we called it mass customization. And that started my journey of writing software to make it printable. So I spent 20 years to capture real world and real object. And in this case, it was the NASA space shuttle. And we put our technology on the space shuttle and space station to, to scan and detect damage of insulation tile and then print them out in the exact shape of the damage. And then a um, space worker can go out in five minutes and repair it. And this was very significant in my life because I wanted to be an astronaut. I never imagined that little girl who screams she was nobody would contribute technology not, not to be installed on every space shuttle and every space um, station. My father was dying at the time when CNN covered this case, and he called, he called me from China. He said, Ping, I am so proud of you. I never imagined this would happen. Many people think um, 3D printing is just for prototyping, but 3D printing is already a method of manufacturing. For example, Invisalign, uh, you may have heard of it, it correcting your teeth. It's an orthodontic application, correcting your teeth without wires and brackets. Geomagic, the company I started, wrote the initial software to automate that process. Today, Invisalign is making 17 million individualized aligner every year in a manufacturing site not bigger than this auditorium. And that is the entire manufacturing, completely automated, 24-7. Every product come down the assembly line is individualized. I said I like to make technology accessible. Here is sugar printing. So anything can be made into powders, can be used as a material to print. And of course, 
sugar cubes does not have to look just square. There is a wedding cake, and also fashion. I'm actually not a fashion designer. I'm wearing some of the 3D printed product,、uh, living it. The reason fashion is interesting is because fat fashion was deemed too utilitarian to have IP protection. So fashion is actually an industry that is very, very innovative. So let me give you some examples of where 3D printing can lead us. Archaeology and museums. This is a Smithsonian. Try、uh, scanned a very big whale, and that's going to be installed at National Mall. It will be the largest 3D printing ever being done.、Uh, this is a test printing.、Uh, the, the the big piece will be 48 feet by 24 feet. And we also scanned and printed entire dinosaur in its one-to-one、uh, -one scale.、And、the idea is the children can touch them rather than you have to be stand in distance, and you can bring those to the classrooms and city halls. We run 3D printing workshop every weekend in our、uh, office for kids, and this was one we run for kids in grade one to grade six elementary school. And they came in and scanned everybody's head and completely customized our football table. 3D printing can bring life-saving application to lifestyle. Here's James. He is a soccer player, and his right foot—he、um, lost his right foot. We scanned his left, mirror imaged it, and also created to mimic the socks and the shoes. So his brain tricks him. That he never actually lost his legs, and he went back on the soccer field to play again, and he's very proud of his new prosthesis. If you go on YouTube, you will see that Jim, Im、uh, Jeff Immel of GE calling 3D printing the holy grail. GE is already using this technology to develop and manufacture the next generation of jet engine for airliners. And he said, one or two points of fuel efficiency means billions of dollars for their client. I know Greece is full of his, his, historical art, culture. When I come to Athens, I can't help to feel the layers of myth, culture, art, history, and the wall. And you have so much to offer to to the rest of the world. You are the place of civilization started. So 3D scanning and 3D printing is a great way to document our collective memory and the collect collective treasure. We have a responsibility to bring them to the future generation. Of course, consumers.、Um, many people are envious of. My shoes. This is a MoMA piece, and it's not only 3D printed, but it's also molded exactly to the shape of my feet. And the now I, I play shoe because Jeff said I call it a home, holy grail because it works on Jeff、uh, works on jet engine. If it's only shoes, I'm not so interested. But I'm pretty sure there are half of the populations. The cold woman are very interested in shoes.、Um, those shoes are printed on the consumer printers. The cost of plastic is about ten dollars. And last time I was in、uh, San Francisco, I was doing a Google handout for technology for White House. They said, "Could you bring your shoe?" And I didn't have it. So all I need to do is to print one.、Uh, <laughs> Here's an acoustic,、uh, acoustic guitar. An interesting thing is that when, if, when you can use 3D printing for a、uh, music instrument, you can design the interior to alter how the sound would come out of the instrument. So you can actually innovate music instrument in a way that was never possible. So what does this all mean?、Um, 
why I'm so interested in 3D printing. Uh, in my journey of working in this technology, I realized it actually impacts our everyday life because it completely changes the way product being designed and made. Design can be globally sourced and manufacturing can be local. And it creates jobs locally. And this is what's significant. And I think this can also have great impact for this country. You have so much that we want to see and we wanted to touch. And with this technology, I'm waiting for next generation of entrepreneurs to come to create things that was not possible before and to make them real. So to bring digital to actual. Today, we can actually not just share the data, interact with data, we can use the data to make things that touches our everyday life, to create jobs, to create marvels, to create things that we can touch and feel and use. And that's what's interesting. I know that there's a financial crisis here and it feels not so good. And and I realized, I wrote a book called Band Outbreak, Break, which has a lot more details in there. And I realized this is actually from Grace, uh, from Greek story, not from Chinese. Chinese said, you rather break, not ban. And I, I guess we all been raised to be strong and, and never break. And you have this story called Oak and Reed. And, and it talks about pride versus humanity. I think both are important. Thank you.